Whoa, that was a close one. Yeah, you almost knocked me over. Hello? Oh, hi, we've been expecting you. You must be Annalise and Royce. And we're excited to talk to you. Hi, I'm Kevin Hawley, Chief of the Cartographic Products and Services Branch. And I'm Linda Orsini, a cartographer here. And I'm Leticia White. I'm the Chief of the Geographic Project Management Branch. Kayla, do you know what cartography means? Something about maps, right? Yeah, it's the process of drawing maps. Anyone can make maps. I could draw a map from my bedroom to my fridge in my kitchen right now. But some people study cartography and make maps as a job. Most maps today are created by using computers. Okay, well the clock is ticking, so let's get started. So, what's the job of the geography team at the U.S. Census Bureau? Well, geography is central to the role of the Census Bureau. It really provides the framework for data collection, tabulation, and dissemination. We have a list of addresses of all known living quarters in the U.S., and we also have geographic areas that we collect and maintain. We can put that information together and we can associate each address with the geographic areas that it's within. For example, what state is it within, or what county, or city, or for example, congressional district, or what school district is within. So the work that the Geography Division does can provide meaning and context to the statistics that the Census Bureau produces. Kevin said a lot of stuff right there. He basically means that Geography Team uses maps and addresses to make sense of all the information that people fill out in the census every 10 years. They plot the results to places all over the country so they can study it and make good decisions for our communities. What kind of tasks does your day typically involve? So typically my day involves reviewing schedules as well as workflows that begin the start of the development of maps as well as the deliveries. And I get to work on the map design and map production for the maps that support data collection and data dissemination. What kinds of maps do you make? Do you make maps that can be used in classrooms? Yeah, sure, we make all kinds of maps. Here's an example here of a population distribution map. It's kind of cool, it's like as if you're looking down from space and it's nighttime and everyone has their lights on on their homes and you can see spatial patterns like it's more densely populated on the eastern side of the U.S. than the western side and you can differentiate between urban areas and rural areas. On this map each dot represents a thousand people. Wow! This map is really cool. All the urban areas, which means cities, have lots of lights. All the rural areas, which means country, have fewer lights because there are fewer people. Here's another example. And this map really showcases the diversity of the United States. Diversity is another word for differences. People can be different in all types of ways, like race, age, ability, language, culture, or appearance. Over here on the left, we have the population by age and sex. And you can see on the left-hand side is the male population. On the right-hand side is the female population. And then we have these grouped by age groups. So you can see you have fewer people of older ages and more people in the younger ages. We produce maps that can showcase all kinds of variables like income, age, and diversity. But how do you make the maps? Actually, we make the maps digitally and on these huge sheets of paper. Yeah, let's go check out one of our plotters. Thanks, Leticia. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Whoa, this is huge. That printer is ginormous. I wish Elijah and I could have seen that. What does it do? Well, it's a plotter, really a big printer. And we use this to print our maps. And this plotter, we can print thousands and thousands of maps in a few hours. In fact, the map we're about to print is a project we're working on right now. No one has seen it yet. And we're gonna use this to make sure that our census geography is properly defined. So why is the census important? Well, it helps inform how funding is distributed to local communities for things like schools and fire departments. This was awesome. We've gathered lots of great data to give Director Dillingham. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Good luck with the 2020 census. Bye. Bye. According to the 2010 census, the city with the largest population in the United States was New York City. 